<laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to the St. John's chapter of the Rally of Canadians Against Parliamentary Prorogation. Just to let you know that this is not the only rally that's going on today. There's going to be rallies going on across the country. Starting at 1 p.m. in each local time zone, in every major city and a lot of small towns across the country, there are similar rallies just like this. Nonpartisan, for the people, and for Parliament. Today we're here in front of the Colonial Building, which is the, which is the symbol in Newfoundland of representative government where Prime Ministers are supposed to be responsible to Parliament, and Parliament are supposed to be responsible to the people, and they're supposed to get the job done. And they're not supposed to be closing when embarrassing questions arise. Yeah. Yeah. This is the third time that this Prime Minister has summarily closed Parliament in, on little notice. The first time was to... The first time was for a federal election. The second time was to avoid uh, the possibility of being defeated in Parliament. And this third time was to avoid embarrassing questions from committees. Each time the bar has dropped lower and lower, and now it's dropped to the point where Canadians have decided that that's enough, and we need to have Parliament open, and we need to have these questions answered. Here, here. Yes. Yes. We're going to have three speakers this afternoon. Unfortunately, one of our speakers, Mary Walsh, has had to uh, she got the flu this morning, so she's out of the game. But we still have, we're going to be at, I'm going to be calling in a moment upon uh, Pete Susie. And uh, who needs no introduction. Lana Payne, who needs no introduction. And Richard Cashin, another name who needs no introduction. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to recognize some of the, some of the people here in the audience. Uh, Siobhan Cody is here, uh, a member for... Right. Jack Harris is here, he'll be here very shortly. Yeah. Oh, there he is. <laughs> and Lorraine Michael is here somewhere in the audience as well. I would encourage you to speak to your members and to let your feelings known to them, although I think by your very presence you've already been able to do that. Yeah. Woo! Politicians are on time! <laughs> so so I think now I'm going to call upon Pete and I'm going to suggest to all the speakers that they use a glove to hold on to the microphone because the microphone's really cold on your hand. <laughs> so I'd like to call upon Pete Susie. Well, thank you very much and uh, God bless you for coming out and, uh, in this weather today. Uh, I'd like to start off by saying, uh, well, apologizing because uh, I did try to call this off today. I hadn't really prepared anything to say, so I called the organizers of the rally and asked them to postpone it. <laughs> you want to throw it? I said it wasn't mine, but I didn't uh, think along those lines. I have to say, the thing about this most recent and almost secretly called recess by the Prime Minister is that it reminds us again that we cannot trust this government. Yeah. Here, here. There is a palpable pungent order to how this administration works. All this twisting, forever spinning, and so obvious in their timing. The implication here is that we are too asleep, too slow, or too indifferent to catch what's going on. And there is contempt in the notion that we cannot even detect when we are being duped. This prologue is an escape hatch, pure and simple. It gets the government out of a tight spot regarding the focus on the Afghani detainees, which would be damning at any time, let alone when the world is watching due to the Winter Olympics. It is the third time they've done this. When he and Peter McKay spoke so often and so harshly against the practice when the Liberals were in power, there was hypocrisy and cowardice here. To assume it could be done discreetly with a phone call smacks of an indifference and disdain beyond even what we here in this province has, have come to expect from Stephen Harper. He is not to be trusted and should not be allowed to manipulate the operation of Parliament as he sees fit. <laughs> so 
So we, along with millions of Canadians across the country, say no to Stephen Harper. No! no! We will remember. We can't threaten seats you currently control in this province. <laughs> but this will not go away regardless. This error, error will echo in your sleep, if indeed you can sleep. May it be on your mind after you tuck in your kids and shake their hands good night. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's Norm Newfoundland's greatest marathon runners, Pete Susi. Before I call upon Lana, I just want to let you folks know that this was an event that was organized pretty well spontaneously out of Facebook. There was a, a, a student down in Alberta who had set up a Facebook group of Canadians Against Prorogation. Yesterday, when I checked it, it had 200,000 members across the country. 